Wouldn't it be great to just be able to put batteries together just like the old times, like our old remotes, you know, like this? That's how you, that's how you install it. Well, as far as I know, there isn't, but couldn't we just make something? Well, yeah, I think we can. The DIY power walls movement is an ever growing phenomenon. Projects are being built all over the world and a lot of them are amazing. Traditionally, the biggest hurdle was finding good sources of battery cells. New cells were prohibitively expensive and the only decent deals were found in China where there were huge risk in ordering expensive products and having to wait long times to get them. But within the last year or so, sources of batteries in the USA that traditionally would ship their product to China for processing have realized that there's a new market in the DIY crowd. And as a result of that, every day we are finding more and more sources of use and overstock lithium battery cells locally. That means that the second biggest hurdle in the DIY battery build is the assembly of all those little cells into one big battery system capable of powering your home. Up until now, the de facto way of doing this has been to borrow technology from the e-bike industry and the adoption of these cell holders and tech from Tesla in the cell level fusing. We started soldering everything together and now we're moving into spot welding, which is faster, but it's still an incredibly labor intensive project. A lot of people in the community started using these types of holders, mostly to set up charging and testing rigs where many cells have to be installed and removed frequently. But one person has actually used them to build his large battery pack. So I started thinking, could I design a system where a regular person following a set of instructions could easily and affordably assemble hundreds or thousands of cells into a large battery pack? There's only one way to find out. So I started by sketching a PCB design on a napkin. At that point, I realized that I don't know how to use PCB design software and I don't know if I have the time to learn. So I put out a call to see if anyone out there would help. And soon, Justin appeared and offered to help. A few emails back and forth and bam! Just like that, we got samples. All right, so here is the board. I would say this is the back side. No, this is the back side. This is the front side, uh, which means that the front side is the one that has these guys, the holders. It's got markings, uh, cell positive, cell negative. You can read them, they're kind of small, but here it says cell negative and then cell positive. These also have Markings, I like to use the ones that are inside the little bubble. I like to use those because they're more visible and so it's less chance of you getting them wrong, right? So if these are the positive sides and these are the positive sides, that means that this board goes like this. Okay, one thing to note is that there is slight space. There's slightly more space between this pin and that pin than all the other ones, right? This is set distance between all these pins here, but because we're doing a 7S, we're gonna have to use a four bay holder and a three bay holder. And so in order for them to fit without any interference, then what we did here is we added more. So that means the way this is designed is to have the three bay closer to where the XT60 connectors and all the other terminals are and the four bay on the bottom where these holes are at that don't have any electrical connections. And then the other thing is to keep in mind that this is the positive, positive side. So I have this one wrong. You flip it around. Come on. There we go. So this is the positive side. One quick way to tell is that this is the positive terminal here. So all the positives inside the little bubbles go on that side and all the negatives and the bubbles go on this side. Flip it around and then you solder this. There we go. Next thing is we're gonna solder this little pin here. You're gonna wanna install it on the back side. What you're gonna wanna do is make sure this is straight. Right now it's at an angle like that, so you use XT60 connectors 
and then it's straight. Another important thing is to have a small tip because these this is kind of fine work here. You don't want to create big blobs of solder. And then uh, there we go. Look at that. And then finally, what we need to do is install the uh, the main surface mount uh, fuse there, right? Now, if you don't want to buy a fuse, then what you can do is use a regular uh, 1 8 watt resistor, right? And then what we do is we solder here this side, we solder that side, then we get the resistor here, and then we just, there we go. That's one side, then that's the other side. This side over here, a little bit more. There we go. So that board is now done. All right, here's the second one. So here are all four of these modules that I'm gonna use. I only put the XC60 on the one because that's gonna be the end. Right, and so now we just gotta load up the batteries in here. Make sure that you're not, these two posts are not touching anything because these are electrified. Uh, make sure all your batteries are the same voltage. I recommend you throwing them on the charger and then charging them all the way up to 4.2 because then that way you know they're all exactly the same voltage. Because if they, they're not, you run into the risk of actually um, blowing up the fuses here. These are the trace fuses that are for all the balance leads, right? So if a cell, it's unbalanced. So if any of the cells is not the same voltage as the other ones, then the other, all the other ones are gonna try and charge it using these leads here. And if, it's, and if the imbalance is too much, then basically this might blow up. Here we go, here's some brand new cells back, 2000 milliamp power. I'm gonna use these as a test. Positive, all positives go on that side, all negatives on that side. Now when doing this for the very first time, uh, make sure that you pay attention. And you know, you, you can touch the cells, you can touch this stuff to see that everything is correctly. At this point, I recommend checking the voltage. Look at that, 27 volt. Here's a... Um, connector that I made a little dongle for one of these uh, cell log eights you can just connect it in here and then you should be able to see the voltage of every one of these cells there we go they're pretty good 22 millivolt difference between the highest and the lowest okay let's build the next one 27 69. I'll stack these two together, then uh, those don't really touch. So you'll need an extra one of these guys. You'll stick it on here. And make sure you don't bend those and touch them because then they're gonna short out. You connect those in there. There we go. Now we put another, now we put the next standoffs here. Then let's do the back side here. Let's add another one of these guys. We line up all those pins. Let's load up the third one. Right, they just went in there. Last thing I'm gonna do here, install the screws. 2761, 23 millivolts difference. So there we go, this is an eight amp hour, right? This is an eight amp hour battery pack. Two plus two plus two plus two, two, four, six, eight. Right, and all of these cells right here, cell number one, they're all connected through these little pins here. Uh, and then you can see it on this little thing here. This is a 24 volt pack, right? If you want to run a 48 volt system, then you would do two of these in series, right? You would go from the 
negative to the positive of another one of these and then that's how you would do the uh, 48 volt packs. Then to connect your BMS you just do it right here. Here are the eight leads for the seven cells uh, and then here are the two main ones. You would put the negative through a thing if, you, if that's you know if you wanted to use one of the smaller one e-bike type of BMS. Now if you want to do batrium that's the other thing you would also put it right here. Now let's test it. Let's put a load in here. All right, here's my setup. Here's the battery that I just built, eight amp hours, right? It's almost fully charged. 3.9, that's where the cells are at right now. This is going through this meter, right? That gives you all the info, amps and watts and stuff. And then that's going to a 24 volt, 1200 uh, watt inverter. Start, there we go. Okay, six amps, 162 watts. Yep, no, there's there's nothing happening here. There's nothing there. Let's let's start up the other light. Boom. Okay, so now I'm at 12 amps. So I'm loading it up to 12 amps, and look at that. Oh yeah, I start to see. These are the uh, the conductors here. All right you see that when my fingers at these each one of these is where the connections to the batteries are look at that they're going at a hundred degrees uh 12 amps 300 watts that's what we're loading up this battery with the cells are sagging a bit uh 3.5 so they're around 3.5 right now all right let's see here Let's look at the fuses. So the fuse is right here where my finger is at. That's not hot at all. All right, that can handle 12 amps, no problem. Well, it's not 12 amps. 13 amps to divide by four, I guess. So it's not much. Each one of those is not seeing a lot. Okay, so those are 106, 108, so this is 10 degrees above ambient. So these are what's going to determine how much we can load up these type of uh, modules. Okay, we're doing 412 watts, 17 and a half amps. Uh, the batteries are sagging down to 3.3, all right, at 400 watts. So we're doing 2C. This is 2C. This is probably where the cells are rated. You wouldn't want to go much more than this anyways. 122 Fahrenheit. How many amps is that? So that's 18 amps uh nine amps right so nine four and a half what so each one of these contacts right here right now it's seen uh it's 18 amps to the total the packs of each each one of these contacts should be seen about four and a half amps less than five amps and the temperature is getting up to 126. Now, where it's safe um, for that plastic, right? Before it starts like melting and stuff, I don't know. So, 126 degrees is it's warm. It's warm to the touch. Hundred twenty seven, eighteen point one amps. There we go. Four hundred watts. All right, so we're getting near one hundred thirty degrees. Uh, let's see if 
diffuse. Yeah, diffuse is doing nothing. Diffuse is right here. Where are my fingers at? Right here. It's not even warm. I'd say, yeah, I say if it goes above 150 degrees, then, um, then it's no good. I think that's probably when this um, plastic will start melting. Yeah, 140. Look at that. It's reaching 140. Of course, over here, they're creating massive heat. Look at this, 293 degrees. Oh, my God, I'm melting my thing. <laughs> no. Don't melt my, my floor. So it's pretty clear that these plastic holders are the weak link in this design. At 4 amps, the cell terminal contacts reach around 150 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about 65 degrees Celsius for all you non-Americans. One way to look at it is that each assembly is capable of around 100 watts peak. Or better yet, each assembly is capable of 1C continuous and 2C peak. This would be a problem if these were designed for anything other than large power wall applications. They are not. Don't use these on e-bikes or any other application that will require more than 1C continuous out of your cells. Obviously, there's still more testing to be done on these. I will build a larger pack, around 5 kilowatt hours, and we'll test these both at 24 volts and 48 volt configurations. As far as costs, well, it looks like each assembly will cost around 4 to $5, which is about what most of you guys are already paying for the e-bike type of holders and soldering and spot welding building materials. But hopefully, my build will show that it will be far easier and quicker to build large battery packs using 18650 cells using this system. So stay tuned for future videos on this project. And with that, I say thank you for watching this video. But before I go, make sure and check out my new line of merch. I recently added three new shirt designs like the EV Outpost one, the eSamba project finally got a shirt, and even this Rapid18650 module project has its own shirt. Please check them out, and if you'd like to support this channel by wearing some of these, I will forever be grateful. Also, one more thing, I currently spend a couple of hours trying to answer all the questions and comments that I get across all my social media accounts. Unfortunately, that's not enough time, and a lot of your messages go unanswered, especially all the ones that require a lengthy response from me. For that reason, I have joined a new service called FanTime. It allows you to buy one-on-one -on -one video chat with me to discuss your projects in detail. I will try to set up half-hour slides during the weekdays for anyone interested. And with that, I say until next video. Bye.